Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic, here with an upgrade guide to the new C21 Precon Silver Quill Statement. If you want to pre-order any of the cards from Strixhaven or these C21 Precons, check out our affiliates. Our Canadian affiliate at Harry Tarantula, where you can use the code CMDR Space Mechanic at checkout to support the channel, or our international affiliate at TCG Player. You can find links to both in the video description. Also, please like this video, and if you like what we do, subscribe to the channel too. We're doing this all week for all of the C21 precons, and we release videos every week doing tune ups and deck building guides. So with the full spoilers for the C21 Precon Silver Quill Statement now available, I've linked the full list in the description below, I wanted to take a look at some of the new goodies and what I would do to make this Precon into a unique and strong deck. Our box legend is Brina the Demagogue. I spoke on Brina a bit in my first Strixhaven spoiler video linked up top. But the legend I want to pivot this build to is for one of the legends inside the box, Felisa, Fang of Silverquill. This 4-mana 3-2 flyer has the returning mentor mechanic out of Ravnica Allegiances that says whenever this creature attacks, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on another attacking creature with lesser power. This is important because Felisa's static ability reads, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had counters on it, create X tapped to one inkling creatures with flying, where X is the number of counters it had on it. So we get the gist of things. Felisa wants us to go tall with counters, then wide with tokens. We get extra value out of our non-token creatures in that they all create us extra bodies on death like a doomed traveler would. But an important thing to note is that Felisa's ability cares about any kind of counters. Fate counters, death touch counters, minus one, minus one counters, absolutely anything. So we'll be looking at taking advantage of going tall with counters and going wide with tokens, a versatile strategy that will make us board wipe resilient. First, let's look at the basics. Lands, that is. We've got a mana base that has some really interesting effects. Mikokoro, Center of the Sea, and Bojuka Bog are good utility lands that I would definitely keep in, and Tainted Field is an awesome duel that you can only run in decks with swamps. These all stay in. But our Cycling Lands, Tapped Lands, and Temple of the False God all come out. We aren't going to be a slow Pillow Fort style deck, and we can't afford to have our lands enter tapped, or worse, not generate mana reliably. Instead, we'll include basics to fill these spots vacated. If you're looking to upgrade the mana base, I'd recommend Godless Shrine, Vault of Champions, and Silent Clearing as efficient dual color producers that won't break the bank the way fetches and true duels would. Now, the fact that we're in black and white means that we are very reliant on artifact mana in order to ramp. So we'll keep in Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, and Orzhov Signet to ensure we have efficient ways to ramp our curve that doesn't need lands. We'll add in more with Everflowing Chalice, Talisman of Hierarchy, and Thought Vessel to ensure we have 7 plus pieces of artifact ramp in the list. This way we can be casting our commander on turn 3 reliably and get working to get counters. For utility, we're going to be very interested in upping the removal and card draw options. We're in one of the best colors for removal, but apart from Fracture and Utter End, we're really given some mediocre options in the base list. Finding room for Anguished Unmaking, D-Spark, and Swords to Plowshare would be ideal. These are some of the best targeted removal spells in the game, never mind just in our colors. And we're spoiled for board wipes in our colors too. We can put in Day of Judgment, Austere Command, or Settle the Wreckage. All excellent options. And if we put counters on our creatures, it means wiping the board can be of bigger benefit to us, refilling our creatures with little flying inklings while our opponents are scrambling to recover. A board wipe I'm really interested in adding in is Black Sun's Zenith. Remember we said Felisa cares about any counters, not just plus one plus one counters. So we could do a Black Sun's Bomb, putting 5 minus 1 minus 1 counters on each creature and getting 5 inklings for each non-token creature we control. Imagine staring down a board knowing you've got to defend against 30 inklings next turn. 
That would have me sweating. Our card draw is going to have to be heavy black leaning since white doesn't have many options. The new Keen Duelist is in the list, a card I really like, as it's a fun kind of dark confidant light that domes your opponent and you, but we'll also want ways to draw cards on demand. We could include classics like Phyrexian Arena, but I think we can get more efficient. After all, Arena doesn't break even on cards until about three turns have passed. That'd be turn six if you cast it on curve. No, I'd be more interested in Sign in Blood or Knight's Whisper, or my favorite in just about any Aristocrats deck, Species Specialist. In a deck like this where we're reliably creating Inklings, we could name Inkling to be able to sacrifice a token to draw a card on demand. Smothering Abomination is another option if we're leaning heavily into an Aristocrats theme allowing us to sacrifice a creature with counters on it to make more creatures that we can sacrifice, drawing a card every time we do. Now, this does imply we want sacrifice outlets, ideally ones that we control and don't have to pay for, and even more ideally, ones that create new counters. Carrion Feeder is an all-star here. On-demand sacrifice and generates itself counters. If it gets big enough to be scary, we could be netting six or more 2-1 flying inklings from this little guy alone. Altar of Dementia and Ashnod's Altar are two more on-demand ways to sacrifice creatures, also benefiting as either a way to mill out opponents or ramp. Neat, efficient, versatile utility. We can also run instant speed spells that sacrifice too, like Village Rites, giving us a 1-mana instant speed way to sacrifice a creature and draw a few cards. When card draw is at a premium, this spell is great. With all of that being said, we want to put counters on creatures. What's the most efficient and effective way to do that? Well, two enchantments spring to mind immediately. Cathars' Crusade and Felidar Retreat. Triggering when a creature enters the battlefield or on landfall, these enchantments make everything you have bigger and better. With Felisa around, it means that we have security in both an army that can beat in, and if our board is wiped, we get a new army of creatures, each entering and potentially triggering Cathars' Crusade. Now that might be a bit of a mess from a math perspective, but they are our best way to make a massive board out of tiny beaters. Unbreakable Formation is another one-time way to make your attacking army indestructible and put a counter on them, but it can also act as a good gotcha if we're expecting a board wipe from an opponent. We could run Luminous Broodmoth as well, who returns our non-token creatures to the battlefield with flying counters on them, allowing us to reuse them and giving them extra counters. Remember, Felisa cares about any kind of counters, including ability counters that we got in Ikoria. Anafenza Kintree Spirit is a great enabler for putting counters on non-token creatures. Just note that unlike some of our other enablers, she doesn't trigger on our Inklings entering the battlefield. Cauldron of Souls can be a neat little interaction too, giving any number of creatures persist. Those creatures come back in with a minus one minus one counter on them, and if they die right away, well, they'll make us another 2-1 Inkling from Felisa. I'd want to put Contagion Clasp in the deck too. It's a favorite of mine that can function as removal, and later in the game, a way to get more counters on permanents we control. Karn's Bastion is a utility land that gives us the same proliferate effect. Excellent to use later in the game. Now next, I would want to ensure that we're including creatures that either create counters or benefit from them. This includes the counter lords like Abzan Falconer, Abzan Battle Priest, or Hagra Constrictor. The Outlast Lords in particular can give themselves counters, but also give an immediate benefit to anything that has counters on them too. Basri's Lieutenant functions as a backup to Felisa, making us a 2-2 Knight whenever a creature with specifically a plus one plus one counter on it dies, whether that's a token creature or not, which is important. Being able to enter the battlefield and immediately put a counter on another creature is also an excellent benefit. For more redundancy, there's Alharu, Solemn Ritualist, a partner out of Commander Legends. 
with a very similar function to Felisa. Not only do they put counters on two creatures when they enter, but whenever a non-token creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it dies, we make a one one flying spirit. That means with Basri's Lieutenant, Alharu, and Felisa out, a non-token creature with one plus one plus one counter on it dying will make us a 2-2 two -two knight, a 1-1 one -one flying spirit, and a 2-1 flying inkling. <laughs> wow. We can then amp that up a notch with Felice Reverent Medium. That way, at the end of each end step, not just ours, we get more spirit tokens equal to the number of tokens created. If we're going in this direction, we definitely want an intangible virtue in the list somewhere just so we can go really crazy. The last include I think is absolutely necessary is the Ozolith. Ozolith? Ozolith. This little artifact can help us bank our counters, regardless of the kind, to put on other creatures. An excellent way to ensure we'll always have at least one creature with a bunch of counters on them. Now, if we are looking to upgrade this further, there are some expensive pieces I'd recommend. One in particular, and that is Anointed Procession. We're going to be making a lot of tokens, and the only thing that gets better than that is making twice as many. This is a value multiplier on a lot of what we do, even though it is a pricey piece, I would recommend it. And naturally, I'm just going to say Smothering Tithe, and leave it at that. The card's good in this format. Who knew? Include it or don't, but it does make tokens. Just saying. Now, let's take a look at our upgraded list. We just about doubled the value of the precon, but we took it in an entirely different direction. We're now caring about putting counters on creatures, then killing those creatures for big increases to our board presence. Being able to sacrifice a creature with five counters on it at the end of our opponent's turn and then untap with an extra 10 power on the board seems pretty good, right? We've ensured we have unparalleled board control via single target removal and board wipes. We have a lot of artifact ramps and plenty of redundancies for our commander's ability. This means the deck functions just as well without Felisa in play, but just as well if we have any of the Felisa likes in play too. Just don't get too eager to say bye Felisa. Let me know what you think about the Silver Quill Statement precon below, and what you think of our tune-up and upgrade for the deck. Look forward to more like these in the days to come too. As always folks, good luck and have fun.